with everything currently going on at the moment and with none of us allowed to go outside because we're all stuck in isolation Eve has decided to update its project discovery and today I'm going to show you guys everything you need to know in order to do the kind of little mini game that's in there and get some of those juicy rewards. I am a disowned hero and welcome back to another super awesome mega wicked cool video. So yes, Project Discovery has been updated. To be honest, I really enjoyed the last one and hopefully I'm going to enjoy this one just as much. We used to be looking for like stars and planets and asteroids and all that kind of good stuff around suns. We are now going to be helping to fight coronavirus by teaching a computer to recognize patterns within cells. And honestly, guys, that is all I know when it comes to the reasoning behind this new Project Discovery. Other than the fact that we're teaching a computer how to recognize patterns, I actually have no idea what it is we're looking at or doing. I just know how to complete the little mini game in order to go up levels and get the rewards. So let's open up the project discovery then. If it's not on your Neocom kind of hot bar, shortcut bar thing here, click the top left button, go to activities and click project discovery. Now, if this is the first time guys that you're clicking on this since it's been updated or maybe the first time ever you've decided to click this, then you will be greeted with like a little um, like scientist guy who will be explaining exactly what you'll be doing. Now, I am a typical fella and decided just to skip all that because I don't need instructions or tuition or anything like that. I just wanted to get into it and see what the rewards were. And that was a bit of a mistake because now I kind of don't understand exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> but what I do know is how to just do this mini game, okay? So once you've gone through that tutorial then, you'll kind of be on a screen, excuse me, a screen that looks like this. Uh, starting at the top, we have our current level. So I am currently level seven. On the right hand side you have your next level your next rank which obviously be level eight um, and this bar in the middle needs to get all the way to the end to achieve the next level in the middle then this little wheel this is our accuracy rating it starts at about 50 percent and as you get um these samples right or wrong you'll go up or down the higher it is the more reward you'll get isk wise for doing them you can just see i've just got some isk there from when i've just done another few before i started the video so yeah the more accuracy you have the better isk payouts you'll be getting so moving down then, this is the actual kind of mini game we're going to be doing. This is basically a slice or a splice of a cell and we just need to figure out how many clusters, again not quite sure what a cluster is, but basically we need to figure out how many clusters are in this uh, in order to submit it and then obviously go to the next one and get our accuracy rating up and get cool rewards and stuff. So basically this is where we're going to be doing all the clicking on the left hand side. In the middle we have these boxes, we'll come to them in a minute. And on the right hand side we have the instructions of what we're meant to be doing. No idea what this word is here. If you know what this word is then please go to the comments down below and let me know because I don't even know how to pronounce that. Is it demarcate? Demarcate? I don't know, stuff like that. Demarcate the clusters. I'm guessing it means something along the lines of identify the clusters, possibly. Uh, but anyway, what we need to do is we need to try to define each cluster by drawing a polygon around it. And how we do that, guys, is simply going to the left-hand side. Oh, excuse me. Uh, going to the left-hand side and simply clicking our mouse and just drawing like a weird shape around all of these points. Uh, I don't know, something like, just like that. Uh, next we need to, or next underneath that, it's telling us a graph can contain up to eight clusters, but often less. Now, typically guys, you'll only see one, maybe two clusters. I have occasionally seen three, uh, but I've not seen any more than that. But as it says there, it could possibly be eight. And each polygon we are drawing can only contain 10 vertices now that's a weird way of saying you can only have 10 points basically so if i do one two three four five six seven eight nine once i get to the ninth one if i try and do a tenth it's basically just going to double back to the beginning to complete the the shape we are making so i click here there you go you can see it's shot straight back to the beginning that's how many points we can have okay so you can't be too precise with this uh, with only 10 points, but you know, we, we can get a little bit of like a funky shape going on with our with our little lines. 
Right, and that's basically all the information that the game gives you. That's all it tells you to actually do. Now, what it wants you to do, and what I've figured out what it wants you to do, is basically figure out how many clusters there are. These clusters are basically, as you can see here, we've got a big red center, uh, a yellow kind of, well, like, like border around that, then green, then light blue, and then blue. Now, this one's pretty easy. That is simply just one cluster, but you'll go on to some of them where there'll be like a um, smattering of red and then just the different colors around it, and then there'll be a big gap in between them with nothing, and then there'll be another one down here. And all we need to do is basically encompass as many of these dots as possible in a smaller shape as possible. So if we simply start with this one and like work our way just around it like this, we just want to get as many of these points in here as possible. Now, like I said, this is a fairly easy one since that's just one cluster. I just needed to go around the entire thing. And depending on the shape of this kind of, <coughs> oh, excuse me really dry throat today. Uh, depending on the shape I've drawn, gives me a different image here. Now again, no idea what this image is meant to be. It looks like some sort of weird cell or disease or something. Um, but yeah, it's basically telling me I've found one of the maximum kind of eight they would kind of populate as I'm going. Uh, once I'm done, we simply just hit submit. Tells us on the right here, I've just got 63 experience for that. And I've earned 35,000 isk as well. Now this one, Similar to Project Discovery, it's one which um, the scientist guys or whoever you know is putting these on doesn't actually know the answer to. So we need to figure this out. Occasionally, though, it will come up and say you are right or you are wrong, and it's them ones which determine your accuracy. So you do have to kind of pay attention to what you're doing. You can't just be like, oh yeah, mash all the buttons and just keep next, 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 next. Occasionally, it's going to say you're wrong and your accuracy will start falling. So you, know, you do actually want to pay a little bit of attention. To, uh, to what you're doing. So all we need to do now is click continue. From here it's going to give me a brief little overview of my current level, what I'm working towards, which is obviously the next level and it'll be getting this reward for that. And at the bottom here we can see all the rewards this game is going to give us. So I've already got one already which is actually sitting in my inventory hanger in here somewhere. I have, <laughs> I think it's quite comical, I have like a COVID mask in there, like a face mask to stop myself getting infected, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, we also do get ship skins as well, which aren't in there. We'll come back to that list of rewards in a minute. But in these boxes, we also get ship skins. I'm probably going to struggle to find one. No, I'm not. There's one there. We're getting, we're getting these skins, okay? We're getting the biosecurity responders skin and it looks something like this it's actually pretty cool this skin in particular looks quite nice on the legion and the legion so far doesn't have any nice skins except for this one so that's the one i'm currently currently trying to get so they're like a blue and black kind of skin they are pretty pretty nice especially if you're a collector like me to get skins which is always a bonus in my book so as we go up the levels then we're going to start getting hats and t-shirts i'm also going to get the blueprint copies for the Concord ships okay these are like covert cyano ships we get the pacifier at level 50 as we I can't go up yeah oh there we go as we keep on going I need to drag this that's it uh, as we keep going up we're going to get lab coats we're then going to get the enforcer another very nice ship and these go for quite a lot of money as well I think it's like 350 400 mil for the enforcer I mean the price may drop as people start doing this more uh, but yeah, they'll, they'll level out again. Uh, we keep going up there and we're getting some more like goggles and skins and face masks and stuff. And at the very end guys, this is the big one. This is what everyone wants. You will get a blueprint copy for a marshal. And these things go for billions, okay? We just have a look on the market at the moment. It's probably not here. Oh, there is. Uh, there's currently one on the market for 9.4 billion a little bit overpriced in my opinion they usually go for about 7 billion but as you can see there's actually a buy order at the moment for 4.25 so this is why f1 or this is why i in particular and a few people in my corp are running them is to get that blueprint for the marshall okay very nice ship one of the only ways you can get it in the game is by doing project discovery and also by recruiting people into the game as well so yeah very limited ship very nice to have uh so that's it basically all we need to do now is hit continue and it just gives us another cell uh, or another slice of a cell. We just need to do the same again. We just need to go around and get as many of these points as possible 
in a small a space as possible as well. Now this one, I might be a little bit wrong on this one, but I'm just going to demonstrate that you know, just because there's no kind of red center doesn't mean it's not another cell. And this is where people generally go a little bit wrong. So as you can see down here, I have not included these dots as being part of this cluster. And there's a good reason for that. And generally, as you do this more, you'll start to notice patterns like... Um, when I was first doing this, I would just encompass all of this and be like, there's only one red kind of center. So everything must belong to that one red center, but it's not, okay? When these dots start getting very spread out like this, quite far apart, they don't seem to belong to anything, generally means that they actually belong to a separate cluster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line around these. And I hope this is one of the ones where it's going to tell me if I'm right or wrong or not, because uh, I'd like you to actually see what two clusters looks like so let's just hit submit on that and there you go okay this was one that was put into project discovery to kind of test my skill they obviously already know the answer because they're telling me there what the answer is and now i've got that right my accuracy rating has gone up now i'm going to try and explain this as best i can again because this is where a lot of people go wrong, especially the people i'm talking to in my co-op and stuff this is where they're struggling there is only one red kind of center now again it comes down to the fact that i've done this for a while that i kind of see the pattern here uh, but essentially if there's a big red center then all the dots close to it like tightly compacted next to it will belong to that red center now they could be tightly compacted all the way out to like taking up enough all the screen okay they could all be all be really really close tightly compacted like an area of this when they start getting spread out like this they essentially don't belong to anything, okay? They're just kind of alone on their own. They're not kind of centered around like a big dot and they're all grouped close together, like all squished together as if they belong to it. They're just on their own out in space doing absolutely nothing. And that's generally consistent with it just not belonging to the original cluster. So hence two, this is just a, a standard kind of doing nothing, quite happy chilling out cluster. This is a nice, tightly compact, so I am something you need to pay attention to kind of cluster. So I hope I've explained that right, guys. Uh, I mean, it might not be right, but I've hoped I've explained it in such a way that you understand that, because this is something which will catch you out. If, again, if there's two big red, if there's a big red cluster here and a big red one down here, and they're both nicely compact away from each other, dead easy to spot that. But when they're like spread out like this, it's quite hard to determine where this cluster ends and where this kind of spread out one begins. But yeah, you basically just need to go for, once they start getting too spread out, they no longer belong to the tightly compact cluster. Uh, so yeah, again for that, we've got a 91% accuracy rating, which means that, as you can see, my shape was pretty similar to what Project Discovery was looking for. Went a little bit over here, could have probably had that a little bit tighter, uh, but I generally encompassed the entirety of that cluster and didn't get too much dead space in it. Same for this one down here, went again a little bit too wide on this side, a little bit too wide here, and obviously I did miss a little bit here. Um, but yeah, all in all, I got 91% accuracy. I covered 91% of the area. 50% uh, par, no idea what the hell par means. And my average for all this kind of stuff is 71%. So I expect to see this now to jump up to 71%. Or maybe it's rounding it. It's probably rounding it up. Okay, so it's on 7.6. 71 percent uh yeah so there we go we just need to keep on going we'll now get another one and again this is a really easy one to see so we have the nice big red cluster here everything's nicely compact around it so i'm just going to introduce all of these points here now you're probably thinking well these ones on the side they're not so nicely compacted so why are they belonging to this and again it's just the fact that i've done this for a while that i can kind of see so a bit of a, a bit of a pattern emerging from ones I've done in the past. Oh, by the way, to get these to connect, you just simply double click like that. Uh, and what we can do as well is we can drag this around. So I've made the shape. I can go, oh, actually, it's a little, I need to go a little bit up, a little bit down. So I can simply left click, hold, and drag it around. But yeah, so this one here. Oops. Ah, go away. Let's just knock that off. Uh, so this one here, like I say, these are a little bit spread out. But there's not enough of them and they're not spread out enough in my opinion to warrant them being a separate cluster uh, so what i'll do now is basically just encompass the rest of these into a, another cell so i'll just simply follow it around the edges like this 
try and get as many of them in as I can in as small a space as possible. Again, it doesn't really matter if you leave some of them out. I mean, I can cut that out if I wanted and go maybe to there. To there. And I could I could leave them out because, well, they're just miles away. So it's not really going to affect me too much. Just leaving one or two of these dots out. And there we go. There's my, what I think is the, is the two clusters. So... Really straightforward, guys. That's all you need to do. And I can say the more you do this, the more you'll figure out, like, the patterns. You'll just look at it and you go, I've seen this, like, similar ones to this. I know there's one here and there's one there. Uh, one thing you can't do is you can't have these overlapping. See, it's gone red. They can't overlap. They have to be individual, like that, which is why I followed as close as I could here without actually going into this cluster. So if we hit submit on that, and again, it's passed. My accuracy wasn't as good on that one. I mean, I did purposely leave some of the dots out down here. So that's probably why I missed that one too much. And yeah, I didn't cut that as close as I cut off. But as you can see, I passed it. My accuracy is going to go up. In fact, it has gone up to 71.4%. That was definitely two clusters. Uh, it's clear that I might not be massively on target with like what they say it is. But I have for sure just circled two clusters there. So that's it. We just need to keep going. Uh, let's just keep going, shall we? And actually unlock a crate and then we'll open some crates and see what's inside. And there we go. We've just gone up a level. This one is... Again, it's hard to tell if I was right or wrong or not because it's just been submitted. But this looks like one that could possibly have three. Okay, this is obviously all nicely and compacted together. And then they start to get spread out going up here. So I would say this was a separate one because it's all nicely spread out now. And again, as it drifts off this way, these are all nicely so separated. I would say that was another one. And there's a big gap in the middle there. So I don't think those two are together. Uh, so if we hit continue on that, you can see we've just gone up a rank. We are now a trainee data analyst which i'm pretty sure we were before uh but we are now so we've got given a box which we can open and i've saved some of these boxes up guys so we can have a nice look at what's inside first we have to redeem it so if we go to the redeem window down here on the left we can double click or not double click we can select these redeem items and then go to our hanger to find them and, uh, and open them up so down here it's a stack all of this so they're nicely together down here we now have five of them so let's open these things up we get a well it's a reward from concord's project discovery the container is hermetically sealed with an it's a box okay we all know how these boxes work you get to open them and there's goodies inside so let's open this one we should get for the level i am one skin per box as you go up levels you will start to get two and uh, you get them for different ships as well so when you get to the very highest uh, level so you could start getting capital skins t2 battleships and you know, just just the, the better ships basically but level one we're getting like skins for the bantam here so finish that one in fact i could have just clicked open another uh, so we've got the bantam skin there this one's given us the a kaldari shuttle Uh, the Inquisitor. The Tormentor. Nice one, actually. I do use the Tormentor from time to time. I'll take that. Thank you very much. And we got the Imicus as well. So like I say, where's the Tormentor one? These are generally quite nice skins. They're not animated. They're just a, a nice, quite simple pattern, to be honest. I mean... So that, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, where's the Bantam? Let's have a look at this one. Look at that. Oh, that's a lot nicer one. The Bantam actually like all blue. Especially it's big like elephant nose on the front here being blue. So a nice little pattern on the side. Like I say, there's a few ships which I think this skin looks really nice on. I like to use the Legion. Still struggling for a fit, by the way. So if you have a nice fit for a Legion, please let me know. I've lost a few, hence the uh, the levels having to go up. Uh, but if we just have a look at this ship, and then close that so the music comes back, and then have a look at the skins which were available. Okay, the only skins we could get was the Exoplanet Exoplanet Hunter skin. 
bit meh. Uh, glacial drift skin, again, not a big fan. Green and white, not really. And then another orange. I mean, the exoplanet one was the nicest one at the time. We now have access to this one. And I think that just looks so much nicer. Maybe not with this front on it. Uh, there is a way we can take that front off, actually. Let's go for... Uh, which one's the front? Aha! This one. Look at that. That's generally the front I have on. Actually, the subsystem I have on is this one. It just looks so much nicer, okay? It looks... For the Legion, and compared to the other skins you can get, it's a really nice looking skin, this one. So that's the one I want, anyway. Uh, so that's going to be the end of this video, guys. There's not really much else to say. I just wanted to show you how to do the Project Discovery. I know a lot of people have been struggling with it. I have a really, really kind of sore throat at the moment. It's a bit of a dry mouth. So sorry if my voice has been a little bit all over the place. Um, and again, it's hard to be really super upbeat and enthusiastic about Project Discovery because, well, as you've seen, it's not that exciting. But now you know how it's done, okay? If you did like this video, then please leave a like down below and smack that subscribe button while you're there to get more videos just like this one. Other than that, I'll see you right here very soon in another, in a, in another video. Bye-bye. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button as well to get some more game guides, how to's, let's plays and live streams from myself. I also think you should check out this video just up here, but if that one doesn't interest you, then try this one. Other than that guys, take it easy and I'll see you soon.